I was born with two bodies. Okay, I know, I know, it's hard to explain. No one believes me, and I've never heard of this happening to anyone else, but... Well, there it is. Maybe you'll just brush me off, too, and ask if I should be getting my head checked. But at the very least, my hope is that you'll hear this and that someone out there will be able to help me. Two bodies means two families, two homes, two lives. In both of these, I am 16 years old. In one of these lives, my name is Andrea. I have a mother, father, and a younger sister. I have curly black hair and large green eyes. <laughs> we have a dog named Skip. In my other life, I am Millie. I am short with a blonde pixie cut. I live with just my mom in a little townhouse in the suburbs. Both of these lives are mine, and I am both of these people. You must be wondering, how can somebody sustain two bodies? Can someone be in two places at once? You see, that's the problem. In both of these lives, I have a serious condition, and nobody knows why but me. They caught it when I was a young child. At seemingly random times, I would become completely catatonic. Someone would call my name, and I wouldn't respond. I wouldn't blink, I wouldn't move. Sometimes it was even hard to tell if I was breathing or not. It was traumatic for all four of my parents. Andrea's parents rushed her to the hospital, screaming and crying. They ran every test they could afford, although they don't have much money, even now. The doctors came back with nothing. The condition didn't appear harmful, they said, but it should be monitored. Millie's mother was a little calmer about the situation. After all, she didn't get to be the CEO of a major company by being overly emotional. She brought her, me, to a specialist and a private family doctor. She ran more tests, spent more money, demanded more answers, but her doctor arrived at the same result. So why does it happen? I have the answer that none of the doctors have. The thing is, the thing is, I can't be in two places at once. At any time, I can be either Millie or Andrea, but not both. When I become Andrea, Millie will go catatonic. When I switch over to Millie, Andrea becomes a barely living doll. It was hard to deal with when I was a child, that's for certain. I love both of my families, so how could I choose which one to stay with? Sure, I considered switching over to one body forever, but I couldn't bear the thought of losing a family, no matter which one it was. So, eventually, I reached a compromise. I'd spend a month with one family, then a month with the other. Sometimes I'd make the switch weekly, even daily, if the mood suited me. It was the only way that I could keep them both. Sure, this method had its drawbacks. For example, I can't ever get my license. And Millie's mom puts me on new meds every once in a while to try to solve the problem. She won't stop, no matter how much I beg. My parents on both ends find it strange that I never have a problem keeping up with school, despite the long absences that I'm prone to. I think Andrea's parents are convinced that she's some kind of prodigy. Millie's mother just thinks she's hardworking. Either way, this was working just fine. Until about half a year ago. That's when Millie met Leo. Leo is just my type of guy. A little nerdy, with brown eyes and a warm smile to match. He's tall and a little lanky, but his arms fit perfectly around my petite frame. He's smart and knows his way around all my favorite fandoms. I know it might sound immature, but I felt really, really, truly, deeply in love with him in just a few short months. So my plans changed. I felt bad about it, but it had to be done. I left Andrea's family for longer than usual. It was difficult to do, and I knew I'd miss my little sister, but Leo made me so happy, and I couldn't bear to be away from him for so long. I stayed as Millie for six months. In that time, life seemed truly perfect. In fact, it felt as though things improved by the day. I had never gone so long without going catatonic, so my mother was, of course, pleased. Stress melted away from my life. Leo and I grew even closer until we began concocting secret plans of marriage. My life felt stable, happy. I even considered letting go of Andrea completely. It was hard saying goodbye to that family, sure, 
but the further away from them I got, the easier it became. In the end, it would probably be better for them, too. Maybe, just maybe, I could finally make the choice. But after those six months, I changed my mind. I'd been homesick for a few days. It wasn't anything too serious. I was mostly tired with a slight cough and an intermittent fever. My mom thought I'd been overworking myself and wouldn't let me out of bed. As I bled away my time reading and watching TV, a feeling of unease and dreadful guilt began to creep into my heart. I couldn't stop thinking of Andrea and my other family. I knew how much they must miss me, how hard they must be trying to wake me up. I sighed and decided to switch back. I couldn't make the choice. I just couldn't. It would be all right. I'd tell Leo about it, and things would get easier. Maybe he could see me in both my lives. I just prayed that he'd believe me. So I closed my eyes and switched. But when I opened them, I was still Millie. It was strange not being able to switch. I tried and tried and tried again, but no luck. I was trapped. It was as though I had to flex a muscle to switch over, but the muscle had already withered away. I've been trying for the last two weeks to switch back to Andrea, but I remain unable to do so. Every day I grow sicker and sicker. My mother hospitalized me just last week, and I'm honestly terrified. I didn't know that I wouldn't be able to switch back, but I also didn't realize that my choice had been a death sentence. Yesterday, I googled my name, Andrea's name, and found just one news story on her slash me. It covered her brave family's journey as they pleaded for their daughter to wake up. But a statement from the attending physician left me cold in my heart. Although we are trying to remain hopeful at this point, it is very possible that Andrea may simply never wake up. At that point, her family will have to decide the future for their child. No matter how hard I try, no matter how much I cry, I can't go back. Andrea's body is lost to me, and I'm losing this one fast. I don't know why I keep getting sicker. I don't know why this is killing me, but it is. And I don't know what to do. Who to tell? Worst of all, I wonder what will happen if they decide to take her off of life support. <laughs>